Hey guys, what's up? Hey, how about today we go out to Lock and Dam 13 and I'll show you how to make this SX-10 sing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go out there, we're gonna set up the gun, I'm gonna show you some features. We're gonna look at some different um, uh, features such as the uh, dome scan and the polygonal framing scan and and taking pictures, doing the panorama and all that good stuff. So um, I apologize this video is a little bit long, but if you'll stick to it all the way to the end, I promise you there's a lot of good information in there. So uh, the data that we collect, I'm going to do a follow-up video, and that's going to have how to bring that data in, how we're going to process it and everything. So um, you guys hang tight. Let me get everything together. Let me jump in the truck, and we will head out that way. Hey guys, what's up? Robert here. I want to show you guys how to use the uh, Trimble SX-10 uh, with 2017.21. Some of you guys have got the later um, 2018. I think they're up to like 2018.2. But I wanted to show you guys how to run this on 2017.21 and then I'll do another video for you 2018 guys a little bit later. So first thing we want to do is jump into general survey and we want to create a new job. So if I go to job, I go to new job, I'm going to call it SX10 Demo. How's that? So first thing we want to do is, yes, I want to use scale factor only. I'm going to check to make sure it's 1.000. That's exactly what I want to use. I want to go in here. So I've got some options. I've got um, when I'm setting up my coordinate system and my units. So in this case, I want to use U.S. survey feet, U.S. survey feet. Okay, so I don't want to use Celsius. I want to use Fahrenheit. I like quadrant bearings. For you guys that like azimuth, don't check it. Pressure. I like inch of mercury because U.S. square area, um, area square meters. We're going to jump into acres. Um, volume. I am going to do cubic U.S. survey yards. Next page, the only other thing I need to change is 10 plus 00, because here in the US we use 10 plus 00, not 1 plus 00. So it looks like I've got all that set up pretty good. Let's hit accept. So now we've got linked files, active map, and feature library. So linked files would be like another file I want to bring into this. Active map would be a background map. A feature library it would be if I'm doing line work and stuff, and we'll get into that later. So, uh, Kogo settings ground, that's pretty much where I wanted it if I'm doing a scale factor of one. Uh, let's hit accept. So now, to get in and connect up to the SX-10, first thing I gotta do is step over here and turn it on. So first thing we wanna do once our instrument's turned on is we wanna go into um, terminal access. We need to go to settings. We need to go to connect. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen, there's a Wi-Fi. So if I look at the Wi-Fi, it's telling me Trimble SX10 304-102-18. That's my serial number. So I'm going to tell it that it's already picked it up. And I'm going to go ahead and use it. So I'm going to say enter. Go back to general survey. Now, one of the things I do want to mention is when you first fire in this thing up, the best thing you can do, there's a black cable that comes in that box. Take that black Enabling cable, GPS plug it into your SX10 and also plug it into your to your data collector and let it connect the first time that way that will set the radio settings and stuff so i've already done all this in mine but i'm going to show you where the radio settings are at if you go back to connect i go to radio settings here's the radio settings right here so radio channel network id okay so you can go in and set your channels make everything work Let's go back into general survey. As you can see, we are connected up to the SX-10, so now we can do what we want to do. So first thing I want to do is go into measure, and I haven't set up survey style. That's good, because then I can show you how to set up survey style. I back graded from 2018 back to 2017, so I can show you this. So let's go into settings, let's go to survey style. I'm gonna say new, 
I'm going to say S X 10 demo. So all my other survey cells aren't going to work because I am, because I've backgraded. So let's look at, this is a conventional survey style. Hit accept instrument. What do I want to use? I want to use the SX10. I like for it to be on tracking. I like for my backside to be on zero. So none of this other stuff we're going to worry about right now, except topo point. As you can see, auto step one view for storage. Your, your default display could be horizontal, vertical angle, and slope distance. We're going to accept that. We're going to store it. Escape. Now I'm going to go back into general survey. I'm going to go to measure. I'm going to go to station setup. So as you can see, I didn't do a very good job of leveling my gun, but it's not out of range. So for this exercise, I'm going to move on. So one of the things you could do right here if you wanted to, is I could actually take a picture of what I'm set up over. So it will actually take a snapshot. There it is. I can draw on it if I wanted to, do whatever, door, hit the wrong button, escape. So now you can see I'm set up over it, hit accept. Okay, now then, the gun will read the barometric pressure from the instrument. This is pretty much true. I think with all the uh, S-Series gun, with the exception of maybe the S3, um, not positive if it has it or not, but it can read the barometric pressure from the gun but it can't read the temperature. So I'm gonna leave the temperature there, let it correct my parts from in. For those of you guys who aren't familiar with parts from in, what we're doing is we're correcting the EDM because the, uh, it uses the speed of light to actually get our distance. Well, the speed of light in space and the speed of light on the ground are different based on barometric pressure. So we have to put in the temperature and barometric pressure to correct our EDM so our distances are correct. So here you go. Here it is all set up. I'm gonna say enter, accept, okay. So before I get too far down the road with it, look at there, there's my camera set up that I'm using right now. Before I get too far down the road, let's do this. Let's go into target one. I'm gonna hit the number button there. So target one, that is the prism I'm using, R10 360 prism. I could call it R10 so I knew which one it was. So when I click on it, I could say R10 prism. I wanna use it, so say accept. Okay, so now it's set up for the R10 prism. My instrument point name, I'm gonna call it point number one. My code, which is a description. So you have a point number that you're gonna set up on and you're going to have a code, which is gonna be your descriptor code. So I'm just gonna call it CP, instrument height. There's two places to measure on the gun. There's the higher point, which is a little crosshair. And it's going to be, if you're uh, looking at the gun, it's gonna be on the right side. So it's gonna be the crosshair that's on there, you're gonna measure that, and then they have what they call bottom of notch. So you can see it's either true height or bottom of notch. I'm gonna use true height. Right now I'm just gonna call it five foot. So I don't have any coordinates out here. I said scale factor of one. So I'm just gonna roughly show you how to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the old famous 5,000, 5,000, elevation 100, enter. And if I click the control point, if I need to go look for my five thousands of points and I want to find just my control points, I can click on that and it'll sort through everything so I know it knows it's a control point. Say accept. My backside point name is two. My code, CP for control point. Bearing, I'm going to say zero. Enter. Angles and distances. Now at this point, if I can either go and set a point and pop my prism on it and take the shot or if I'm not worried about it right now I could switch to my DR to my reflectorless that's what DR stands for direct reflect so let's say I switch to it and I'm just gonna say measure store okay so I got my setup and backside I use 5,000 5,100 I just use the DR on the gun okay so on the data collector we have hot keys now if you're using a Yuma Talbot you're gonna see on the right hand side of the screen you've got some hot keys when I'm using the TSC-7, I've got more hotkeys. I have actually, I have 12 hotkeys that I can assign different things to. So what I've done is I've assigned different hotkeys to different things. So if I say F2, 
you can see that pops me into my search, I mean into my joystick, and if I was to go to F1, it would go to search. So what if I went to F3, see I don't have anything assigned to F3, so I could assign something to each one of these hotkeys, just FYI. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, since I've already got my setup in my back site, we're gonna go to measure. Now that, what do I wanna measure? If I just wanna use this thing in robotic mode, I'm gonna go to measure topo, and I'm gonna be in robotic mode. If I want to switch to the camera view, I hit the little button down there in the lower right hand corner, it switches me to the camera view. I hit it back, it goes back to my map. So it's asking me for my first point name. I could shoot something somewhere. Let's see. Um, here, this is crazy with the uh, SX10. Just kind of give you an idea of what you can do with this thing. Let's do that again. Oh. So let's say I want to shoot that pole right there. How's that for zoom? I could go into my DR. I can say measure. Oh, point name, I'll call it 100. For a code, I'll call it power pole, enter store. Okay, so I just stole power pole shot over there. So let's look and see what else we have around here. Um, let me zoom out. I can use this on the keyboard. So I'll tell you what, we're actually out here to lock and dam. What if I need to go and shoot something over here on the other side? Okay, so I'm not at full zoom right now. I still got uh, two more. Uh, I actually have two more settings I can go to, two more zoom levels I could go to if I wanted to. Just to kind of give you guys an idea, and if there was something over here I needed to shoot, just anything, I could say store, and I just stored a shot there. So, and that's in tracking mode. That's what we set up in the style to begin with. Okay, just showing you some of that stuff. Now let's jump all the way back out. Let's go to measure. Let's go to scanning, because that's where this thing really shines, right? So let's say I need to scan that all the way over on the other side of the Arkansas River. So I've got different ways I can scan. I can say rectangle, I can say polygon, which is what we're gonna use right now. You know what, let's just start with the first one. Let's go to rectangle. I've got different modes that I can choose from. It's telling me at um, 328 feet, I'm gonna have about 310 spacing, but let's see how far it is over there. Let's say measure. Okay, so we're at 1,800 feet. It says my point spacing on a course is 1.7 feet. So let's say instead of course, we went to fine. Now I'm down to four tenths. If I went to super fine, it says at 1,700 feet away, I'm at two tenths. Um, so let's say rectangle. Let's say there and there. Let's say I want to scan that. It says it's going to take two minutes, and I'm going to have 12,000 shots on that, on that deal. So let's just hit it. Let's see what happens. Okay guys, as you can see, we finished scanning um, that area over there, 1,700 foot away. That was a rectangle scan, so we just did a rectangle on it. So now let's look at um, trying to scan something else. So let me spin this thing around. And I'm going to kind of get rid of my zoom here. So let's say that instead of a rectangle, I'm gonna do a polygon. So I wanna do a polygon. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm just gonna tap everywhere I want this thing to scan. Okay, so there's the area that I wanna scan. Now then, it's telling me it's gonna take five minutes to scan it on Superfine. If I go back to standards, point spacing at 1700 feet, but let's see what at 1,300 feet, our point spacing is coming down to 6,800s. So it says it's going to take 22 seconds to scan. Let's go to fine or super fine. It says five minutes. Let's just go to fine. It says it's going to take one minute, 27 seconds. It's three tenths spacing. Let's just go ahead and scan it real quick so you guys can take a look at this.
tasks can complete. Okay, guys, as you can see, that scan is completed. Let's jump out real quick and um, let's go look at the map and see what, uh, what the map can tell us. So we go to the map and we look. Now I can pinch and, and zoom. So you can see it picked up. You look at my scale over here to the left. You can see what it picked up. So if we hit this little uh, orbit button over here, we can actually turn it around like this. So you can see there's that area we scanned a while ago, that wall. Whoops. Back out a little bit here. Here is the bridge that we're working on. Okay. So let's get back out of there. Now one of the things I might want to mention, what you really need to do with this thing, is we need to do uh, we need to take pictures as well. Now under the pictures it's going to be under panorama. Now, under panorama, you've got the overview camera and you have a primary camera. Now if you look overview camera, right now it's not telling us anything because I don't have anything scanned set up. So watch this. Let me back. Whoops, went way too far back. Scanning. So if I said full dome scan, I can do a full dome scan. I'm going to do it on course. Um, if we said, just to kind of give you an idea, if we said 328 feet, we'd be at 310 spacing at, um, at 100 meters. So, it says it's going to take 11 minutes. So I'm going to let it scan, do this 360, and we're going to do it on a panorama. Now what I wanted to show you was number of images 40. Now, if I decide I want to go to the primary camera, I've got 465 images now. They're smaller, tighter, take 23 minutes just to take photographs. So let's just do an overview camera. I'm going to do a 10% overlap. And I'm going to show you this. So right now, what it's doing is it's taking pictures. It's taking four of 40 images captured. So it's fixing to come around here and take a picture of me. And this is where I say cheese. So I'll speed this section up because there's no reason for us to sit here for 15 minutes waiting for this. So I'll end this and then we'll get towards the end. I'll pick it back up again for you. Okay, as you can see, we're at 33 of 40 images. So it's flipped over and it's uh, taking pictures of the ground around us right at the foot of the tripod. Okay, it's got 40 of 40 images. So it's taking all the photographs all the way around uh, on a dome scan. So the only time you might want to do a dome scan is like maybe if I was underneath that bridge over there, maybe I'd want to do a dome scan there. Something where you've got something above you. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is a, is a horizontal band, which is probably out here what I would use. Uh, nice thing about a dome scan, I don't have to think about it. I just hit the button and let it go. So it's going to be catching a lot of air. Uh, it's going to be scanning things that we don't need, but we'll let it run. We'll see how it works, and um, I'll show you guys the images. Okay, looks like we're finishing up the scan. 3.97 million points. Okay, it's telling me with all the movement of it going around and around, I've got a nine second change, which is gonna make um, basically a hundredth and a half at a hundred meters. So I'm gonna say, yes, I wanna save the scan. That's a setting you can change so it doesn't uh, come up. So let's go back to map. Let's see what we got. So now if I zoom out and look, I go to orbit. I'm pinching with my fingers. So that's what we have. So this is just one setup uh, right in here. So this area is going to be, actually my truck is parked right there. You can see that, use two fingers to pan. If we look down, you can even see my pole and you can see a camera that I have right there. And I've got another camera sitting right there that you can see. So it even scanned my cameras. So we've got a little bit of everything in there. You can see the trees. 
the fence. You can see everything in there. So you can go to settings if you want to. I could go to scans. I could turn the scans on and off. I go to settings. I can change some stuff, like if I wanted to look at um, right here, I could change the color of it. So I could say scan color, uh, medium size, I could say large, or I could say uh, cloud color, and I'm gonna go back to medium. I'm gonna go to like uh, magenta or something. And you'll see the color of the scan chain. So you can use that sometimes to pick out things. Now it's not gonna show you intensity. It's not gonna show you color. That can't be done until we get back to TBC where we bring it in and it'll colorize everything. But that is a good way to look and see if you've picked up everything that you wanted to pick up on this site. So uh, you can see there's that scan we did at 1700 feet away. So put that in perspective and you can see that that's 1,700 feet away. And there's a shot I took on the wall, which showed up as power pole, since I didn't change my code. Um, if that's 1,700 feet away, you can see that we picked up stuff past um, that. So we can scan out, looks like close to 2,000 feet with that thing. So. Let's get out of here and I will take you back and show you one more thing. So now if you're looking and you're looking at this camera view, see how you can see the scan in there? You can always go to scan. I can turn those scans off so all I have is an image now. So now let's look at real quick, let's look at how to do a horizontal dome or horizontal band. So the horizontal band, I'm going to pick like right here and pick down here somewhere and as you can see there's my band. So if I want to make my band bigger, smaller, whatever I want to do, first pick is going to take that, second pick is going to do that. So I'm just picking the screen. So if I pick the screen and I do a horizontal band, you can see that's all I'm going to pick up. So you're not wasting all that time picking up the sky. So I just went scanning that bridge. I went to 15 minutes. I went down to 3 minutes and 20 seconds on a course. So what if we did a fine? It's saying it would take an hour at fine to scan it. How much detail do I need? What am I looking for? Um, maybe I want to do a super fine. So it's going to take three hours. I'm going to have 40 million points on that bridge. Now remember, that horizontal band is a 360. So I'm not just scanning that bridge. I'm scanning everything else. So if that was the case, maybe what I would do is, is I'd go back to Polygon. Whoops. I would... I'm zoomed out as far as I can right now. So... If I were to move the camera around, if I don't like it, I can back up, back up, back up. Okay, I'm going to leave that point, pick a point up here, pick a point up here, pick a point up here. So now I've got that whole bridge, you know, it's super fine, it says it's only going to take an hour. So if I went to fine, it says it's going to take 25 minutes. If I went to standard, it says it's going to take 6 minutes. And if I go back to course, which we already have a course scan, it says it's going to take 1 minute and 37 seconds just to shoot that in. So just kind of give you guys an idea of how all this works. So you can do, you've got the options of rectangular, polygon, horizontal band, and full dome scan. So hopefully I've explained all those to you so you guys can figure out what's what. So now what we've got to do, um, let's say that we want to pick up move. We want to go to another spot. We want to, we want to set a nail over on the other side of the bridge and pick up the other side. So that's all we would do. We've got our instrument setting over here with a setting over a nail. Um, I walk over there with the pole, I take a shot, this thing in robotics mode. So all I would do is go to measure, measure topo. I would go to this point, I would walk over there and I would get a shot. So um, set up there and I would roll on. So if I go to menu 
and I went to measure, you'll notice there's a new station setup. So if I hit new station setup and I hit the wrong button, if I said accept, it's asking me for the point name. So with that new station setup, what it's doing is it's asking me for the point name that I just shot over there. It's asking me for the code, for the instrument height and everything, and it's already gonna have the coordinates. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, hope I didn't go through things too fast for you. Um, I just kind of want to show you how this works. I'll do some other videos on actually how to use a robot and stuff a little bit later. Um, but that's how you use the SX-10 to get your scanning. We'll take it back to the office. We'll dump the data and I'll show you what that looks like. So uh, you guys stay tuned. Be right back. We're headed back to the office.